Big changes are coming for the college admission exam taken by nearly 2 million people a year. It is the SAT's second major overhaul in a decade. And as Jim Axelrod reports, the organization behind the test admits the current SAT is, isn't doing the job. Jim, good morning. Well, good morning, Nora. The SAT redesign announced by the College Board Wednesday reflects concerns the exam was not testing for the skills that would best predict college success. The change may also be the result of competition with the other major college entrance exam, the ACT, which topped the SAT in numbers of students who took the test last year. 33 colleges and counting no longer require SAT exams, with some finding little correlation between SAT scores and academic success. Admissions officers and counselors, they're concerned that these exams have become disconnected from the work of high schools. 1,600 will once again be the perfect score. No more 2,400 point grading scale. There will be no more mandatory essay. And fancy vocabulary words like sagacious and membranous will be replaced by words students will actually use consistently in college, like synthesis and empirical. The new exam will contain questions that focus on a more narrow range of subjects. Calculators, allowed since 1994, will now only be allowed on part of the math section. And a much reviled rule that deducts a quarter point for incorrect multiple choice questions will be gone. We've also been listening to students and their families, for whom these tests are often mysterious and foster unproductive anxiety. That anxiety has created a $1 billion test prep industry and led to criticism that students' SAT scores unfairly correlate to their families' incomes, reducing the chances for poorer students to get into more competitive colleges. So, Daisy, what should we do today? What should we work on? It's a system Debbie Steer knows all too well. This New York mom began a quest to find the perfect test prep regimen for her two kids. She even took the test okay. herself seven times and wrote a book about it. We read the New York Times every day. Um, when I hear vocabulary that they don't know, um, I point it out to them. I correct their grammar. There's no shortcut to the practice. Now, it is worth noting Steer was able to improve her scores over time. The College Board addressed this idea of privilege trumping merit by promising to provide online tutoring for students who cannot afford the tutors or high-priced prep. Jim, thank you.